Welcome guys to the Two Heads Podcast. So we just want to drop in with a quick warning before we kick off with this episode. Today's episode is very, very deep and it is a very sensitive topic covering the clerical abuse in the Catholic Church back in the day. So if you have anybody who is underage or a minor in any way, this material is highly sensitive to them. So I would ask that you remove them from the room. This is a two-part series. Obviously today you're seeing the first part and we will uh, promote the second part in due course. And guys... Like always, please subscribe, like, and share. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Kevin. I am Mukhtar. And this is the Two Heads, Two Heads Podcast. Podcast. Uh, today we have Darren McGav- McGavin with us. Darren, oh, how guys. are you, brother? Are you well? <laughs> All good. You're good. Rocky starts, rocky starts. I've been on me shit now today. Um, uh, Darren is a shamanic counsellor um, and has a very deep history that we're going to dive into today. Um, I think the best way to do that, as always, as we always do here, is start from the very start. Yes. So just kind of your, your background, your childhood, where you grew up. Um, the start, bring us the, through the, the, the beginning. The, so the yeah, I, I come from Bali Um originally Tom and Road. I was born in the house, um, well-known community, of course. Um, so yeah, there was five of us in the family. So two older and two younger. So I'm the middle, the middle child, yeah. middle child syndrome. Oh, always the good one. Um, dad was a, a hard worker. Mom was a hard working housewife. Mm-hmm. Lived with lots of friends growing up in the seventies. I was born in seventy two. Um went to school in Ballyferma. Started off in the Dominican convent, the nuns, uh, St. Michael's, and then at the age of making the communion at seventy nine, progressed across the road to the De La Salle Christian Brothers. Okay. Um at the age of seven. Mm. Brilliant. And and Dan, come here, growing up in Bali Ballyferma, what was it like at that time? At that time, it was kind of, uh, I suppose, telly to be land to be the word of juice. Yeah. Um, it was it was like a baby boom. Them houses were newlywed houses. They were giving out like a, a sweepstakes every year. And mm-hmm. um, somebody, one of the, the, the mother or the father would queue up and you were, your name was called out and you got a key. Yeah, just like that, yeah. Just like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think to buy the house back then, it would have been something like uh, £9,000. pound. yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, if she, they're gone for nearly 300,000. You, you rent a room for that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'd rent a room. So, yeah, we, we'd um, two bedrooms, just two up, two down. Uh, bathroom out the back, uh, kitchen at the front, sitting room, two bedrooms upstairs, five kids in one room. Mad. Yeah, wow. Which was, back then, it was kind of good because there were bigger families. So, I'm sure people have experienced. Yeah. Maybe 10 or 12 in one, one in room. One, yeah. One house yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, It's mad, isn't it? It's mad the way time changes, though. It's like, nuts, now man. when you see somebody with five kids and you're like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of kids. But, like, my mom grew up in a family of nine as well. Nine girls, one, and actually, family of ten. Nine girls, one brother. No TV in the house. No TV, yeah, nothing like that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, but it's mad, like, it's mad. Like, oh, I have three. I have three and I'm bleeding nearly bald. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Drowning so, in yeah, it's <laughs> nuts. But yeah, let me take you to, back to that now. So growing up in Balia then at that time, you, know, you came from a big family. Um, were you a good kid? Were you, were, you, were, you, were you known for the streets? Were you a mess or, or which um, way were you like? I would have been quite, quite quiet back then. I perceived myself to be quiet. Kind of a loner. Okay. okay. Yeah, we had lots of friends. Like, all our neighbours on the street were in my class. Right. So we went to school together, we played rounders, piggy, yeah. you know, knick-knack, all that kind of jazz. Mm. Um, went to the park together. A lot of them were sports orientated, so a lot of the kids would have been into the ga, the hurling and the soccer, yeah. where I wasn't into any of that whatsoever. I was into nature. I'd be down to Phoenix Park, yeah, chilling yeah. out around the cross, playing on the swing. Yeah. Down mm. the duck pond, all all that kind of stuff. Shit, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I didn't hang around. Um, I wouldn't had a particular type of group of friends. Okay. So I would just just buzz in and out of groups and do my own thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when did you guys? When did you start? Because I read somewhere. I read into you. I done a little bit of reading into you as well. I, I know. I um. I know you've been through a lot. Um. From a young age. Yes. And um. 
when did you start getting into trouble in school and all like and like when when did that really come across like, around what age um i started the skill when i was four no i understand that the first the first day at school the first day at school i put the skill bag through. straight through the window the first day the first day when i was four and uh, i legged the home i remember we were uh, near mid mid terrace house so i snuck over the neighbor's wall and was looking through the the sitting room as it was and the school teacher was there my ma was crying my dad was crying so i didn't a clue what they were crying about so i had gone missing you know yeah. that way yeah. so yeah even back then the first day at school i knew that uh school wasn't for me wow um trouble wise in school i wouldn't say i was trouble as per se what i would say was i was quite a loner in school i found that i found school difficult there was a lot going on at home so i couldn't concentrate on being mm. present at school yeah. yeah from day one i was in a special class yeah okay Um, i was segregated from everyone else yeah and um, the usual jigsaws and drawing pictures and mm. you know slow to the abc and slow to the one two three okay um and that that kind of followed me all through um for, for you know the age of four five and six mm. when it came to the communion time then so communion would have been around may back then may june and then you were put into designated classes. So in September, when you would come back after making your communion, you were escorted then by the, the teacher that had you as kindergarten, as you would call it now, over to the big school, the brothers. Yeah. So I went from a slow class straight into where they would have, I would have classed them as quite intelligent group. Okay. And then I was brought into uh, Brother Norbert's class mm. um, in class 59 at the bottom of De La Salle brothers. Big man. A big, big, burly man. Mm. He looked like um, a big Colombian. Mm. Hair gel. Uh, um, um, uh, he used like a Vaseline gel in his hair. Yeah. Real tanned, big shoulders back. Played a violin. Quite uh, an aggressive looking man. Yeah. Mm. And, and and like, let me take you back a little bit there. So, like, when you're when you're going through all that, and anyway, say for example, yeah, you were saying something. I heard you were saying something there about. Um, was a little bit more problem in the house as well yep. how was your how's your relationship with your father yeah me, me back, me, then, like, back then me me relationship with my father wasn't great Um he had his own uh demons i suppose growing up and they played out like every other household in the area yeah there was there was alcohol involved Um back then we didn't have the the social problems of drugs per se most people were drinkers yeah and that kind of snuck into the house and uh, <laughs> it's shown it's shown itself as various different angers yeah and uh, like uh, uh, like come to say that there was a spot there was a place where i was reading and um there was a the, the, the where, where it really touched me was there was a part there was a time that you you misbehaved somewhere and when you came home your dad was that angry with you that he put smoke out on you did he, uh, he put smoke out on you or something like that, that he was put... yeah that was yeah i got caught smoking okay right, so that was the yeah the catalyst yeah I went on the hop from school. I thought he was going to be in work. Yeah. So yeah. You put does what? What like you put it on your hands or the arm? The arm. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah what yeah. was what was he the information remember. there? Like what, what what was that about? Like what, 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 what like is that teaching you a lesson? In he his didn't eye? Teach me any lesson? No, I still smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That was probably his intention, though, was to but try I, to But I that. smoke when I'm in the mood, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. smoke when I'm in the mood. Yeah, there would have been there would have been uh, various degrees of violence in the house growing up. Again, in hindsight, looking back, he wasn't he wasn't the person he is today. He's a different man today, but the alcohol had a hold to him. And as I said, we were subjected to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And do you feel like that's what played a big role in the likes of like age four? pinging a, a school bag through a window is like <laughs> yeah there was definitely a rebellious sign in me back yeah. then yeah and it, it came from was. from that kind of from nature. observations yeah, yeah 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 i suppose when there's something happening to you at home and there's only i, th I think there's a level of pain a human being gets to where it doesn't become pain anymore mm. so the fear element just leaves the body so you just tend to do what you want to do yeah and um, mm. yeah from a very early age i always just done my own thing i, I I listened to people for the whole 10 seconds of it. Mm -hmm. But I already had a preconceived agenda of what I was going to do, so I got done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the consequences to me. Yeah, yeah. sure were paying attention to that anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then and then the same then your your mother would have obviously suffered in that, I assume, as well. Yeah. Yeah, back then 
the back then, um, it, again, it was a societal thing. There, there was nobody in the 70s, uh, late 70s, that came from that background that had moved into those suburban areas that uh, that didn't miss something like that violence at home from a husband. Mm-hmm. That was that seemed to be a common thread, especially in Ballyferma, especially with the mates I went to school with. It was an unspoken thing, mm. but it was a known thing. Yeah. If if you weren't in a good way, your mate brought you into your his mom's house and you ate dinner there. Yeah, right. and then yeah. on any given day we were you were in and out yeah, of everybody in else's yeah. houses. Yeah. Yeah. And then when there was trouble going on, the war council had come in, so the mas would be having the cup of tea and the cigarettes would be lighting and the discussions that we had the of council. the man bastards, you know that we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we cla- we class them as the, the war committee. <laughs> yeah. It was all well and good when they were uh, voicing their opinion to royal somebody up, mm. but when they were gone and, and they came home then with a the drink on them and she tried to mm. assert that it went all yeah, it <laughs> went all shades off. of wrong. Yeah, yeah, and no support, you know. So mm. yeah, it was it wasn't a very uh, at the time it wasn't a very happy place to grow up. Right. It wasn't a place I wanted to be. Hence, I would I would meander off. I'd be down the Phoenix Park or the Coros or down an oil and bridge. Like anywhere you know. other than home was oh, a safe yeah. spot, spot for me. Yeah, wow. the streets and was the place to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, thank you. Um, but like um, then like growing up like that and like saying this, for example, the street is where it's supposed to be, but with, with, that you felt comfortable. Um, yes. I could relate with that as well. Which uh, um, but like going from that to becoming an altar boy. How, how how what was the transition there like you know because like like from being on the streets and then all being being going to because because like I was saying when I when I went into you it went from that from being at home blah blah to to being an altar boy I was like where's the gap there how did that happen you know where 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 yeah, did the transition come that, in from that there that was like, a very you know? fast transition um, especially after the communion so when I joined the Della Sal brothers um, in the September of seventy nine. Um, again, we were given our class, we were given our teacher, we were given our do's and don'ts, um, and you were given the slap straight away. Okay. Yeah, there was there was fear and authority put into you straight away. It was it was a big shock from you know cuddles if you fell in a yard, cuddles, plasters, and, and a lollipop mm. to to beatings, and then there was bullying going on in the class. Everyone, I suppose, all the lads were fighting for their their their, their, their place in the in the class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. A charismatic, I'd call him charismatic at the time. There was a priest that used to frequent the school, Father Tony Walsh was his name. Big big smile, big grin, big personality, big noise. Um, and all the kids used to love him. He was like the Pied Piper of Hamlet. The minute he came into the, the, the yard, in, in the school there was a top, middle and bottom. Mm. So he would, the minute he'd come in, there was just like a gathering of um, people around him. And... Um, Never took much heed to him. I used to always cop him, though. He used to be always having p- kids on his lap. I did cop that, but I didn't cop anything about that. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything strange in that. Yeah. I came from a house, although there was violence, there was also love mm. on both parts. You know, I suppose the conscience kicks in when, when a parent does something and you're showing love. It can be quite confusing yeah. as to yeah. what it is. Sometimes you're afraid to get a hug because you know you're going to get a slap know, off yeah. or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. So we always had that weariness around affection mm. um, growing up. So he blew onto the screen in, in the school. He was part of um, uh, uh, the All Priest Show. I, 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 yeah, I heard Elvis impersonator. He was an Elvis impersonator, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was good. Yeah, he was good. He could take he him travelled around too. Ireland, didn't he? He travelled around Ireland. Confirmed. Yeah, he was involved with Father Cleary at the time. He was in a scandal as well where he had an affair with the housekeeper. And there was a child born from that, Ross Ross Hamilton. So Ross is a friend of mine, still today. Oh, yeah. So it's it's synchronistic the way what happened in the house and Cleary living there to what happened his mum and him him being part of that house as well. Okay. So yeah, the he he was from the age of seven. He was a big deal, um, in the school. How I came across him predominantly was, um, I was I got a hiding one day from a few of the bullies in the class, and he got a hold of me and he asked me, "Was I all right?" And I said, "Yeah," and I just broke down. I said, "I can't handle this anymore. I can't run anywhere, but I'm getting the hiding." And he said, "What do you mean you can't run?" I said, "Well, the Christ- the brothers giving me beatings." The Christian brother had a, a leather strap called Auntie Char- uh, Uncle Charlie, mm. and he had a w- wooden dowel called Auntie Betty. 
and when you got bet, I mean you got bet, and mm. um, he would grab you by the locks and pull you, lift you out of the chair mm. as a child. But he'd always scream, he'd say, this is the face of the Incredible Hulk. So before he had done it, he had you up and your face obviously by the locks. Yeah. And the kids, the kids would be laughing at you, you know, you'd mm. be degraded and humiliated. Mm. I was beaten with a stick one day and the stick broke. I remember wetting myself and laughing at him. And I suppose I laughed for probably fear. Mm. Well, he took the strap out and he looked like a Rottweiler. The, the amount of saliva, I'll never forget it, that came out of his mouth. Um, he dropped me to the ground. I just completely dropped with, with, the, with the, the beating I got. And I was kicked around the class like a dog for urinating myself. Um, yeah, I went home with the, the hand all swollen. It was the only time I seen my dad pick up for me. He, uh, he, uh, not back then, when you done yeah, something what wrong. that's I was about to say, like, you know, what did the parents say to that, like, you know? Yeah, the father had said to me what happened. And back then, I think it was in any community, you didn't get that for nothing. You yeah, must have done you something. Have done something, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and the only way he copped it was because I couldn't hold a pen right to do me 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 homework. Oh, right. And he said to me, "Do your homework, hurry up!" And I couldn't. But the next day he came in. There was a knock on the door. The door burst open. He grabbed the brother, and the brother got bounced off the blackboard. Mm. And he was told not to go near me again. Mm. I told the priest about this, and I told him about the stuff that was going on at home between me parents, me mother and father. That I, I, you know, I couldn't concentrate in school. I had a fear, fear of sleeping, a fear of coming to school, a fear, a fear of literally everything. Anything. Everything. I had a fear of everything. Yeah. yeah. How wouldn't you look at that it time? It was an yeah. anxiety, just an anxiety uh, that ran through my body. And um, I remember him saying to me, "I can, I can fix this. I can fix this." And the goes, "No, you can't. My dad's bigger than you. He's bigger, yeah. and the teacher is bigger than you." Mm. And he goes, "Darren, I will look after this." I remember him having a conversation with the Christian brother outside the classroom. I don't know what he said. All I know was I did wet myself in the class for fear of him coming back in with that strap, mm -hmm. even though I hadn't a clue what they were discussing. Um, he never, that, that brother never touched me again. I was made named the, 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 the pupils that were beating me, and they were dealt with on the spot. And I kind of felt bad for them. Yeah, because mm. he didn't do anything to me that day. Yeah, and then um, I'd say it was about three o'clock, a quarter past three that day, and he gave me a lift home. He drove, so back then for somebody to have a car was quite it's a big, quite a big, yeah. thing, quite yeah. a big deal as well. Yeah. and he went in and had a yap at me, mom. And the back then, I suppose women being vulnerable, and and her being upset with knowing that I had to tell the priest this cup of tea the, the cup of tea went on the cigarettes went on <coughs> and then um, he had a yap with me ma that you know maybe it'd be best if he took me out of the, the environment of the house give me something else to be doing instead of rambling the streets me ma said she hadn't got a clue that i was visiting all these places on my own mm. she says all i know is when darren's meant to be home he's home and you ask him to do that and it's done yeah and i don't know him to be trouble per se I wasn't aware of the bullying or what he doesn't tell us that because back then everything was a secret you can't tell anyone about what was going on at home you certainly couldn't rat the, the teacher out because you'd be dead yeah, you'd be oh, you couldn't yeah, rat the rats out because you got a bigger hiding mm -hmm. so you literally couldn't open your mouth yeah you're cornered like yeah, yeah. so mad being that young though that so age, much bro, pressure that's a, you're you know? like six years of age here are you seven i was seven, seven like, at the time Jesus. yeah yeah wow. yeah guys we have something new and exciting for all of you taxi goers taxi drivers in Ireland. Uh, coming soon to the App Store is Easy Taxi. Easy Taxi are gonna revolutionize the taxi space. So anyone that's been caught rotten with, you know, uh, another taxi app that's been finding drivers, it drops off, there's no signal. There's none of that BS with Easy Taxi. So you need to keep your eyes peeled. It's coming very, very soon to an app store near you. Yeah, man. I've been excited about this, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? This app is dropping very, very shortly, guys, on all platforms. So guys, Easy Taxi is for you. You know why? You could be stuck at a session. You'll be trying to go home to your missus before she wakes up. Now, the good thing about Easy Taxi is you could be a session mo or a session lad. They don't judge you. Just get in, get to your destination, and get out. That's how easy it is, man. It's mad. Yeah. Easy Taxi is for you guys. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But another thing I was going to say to you is if you get caught slipping, Easy Taxi. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's just that easy. Very easy. <laughs> hey, lads, the taxi's outside. Easy taxi. Just that easy. <laughs> just that easy. Oh, my Jesus Christ. And, and come here, how common is it for like your dad coming in and hopping your man's head off to... That, that doesn't seem... Like, it's obviously more commonplace back then to get lashings and beatings and stuff like that. Oh, it was a daily occurrence yeah. in school. Oh, yeah. Daily. So, but it must have been odd for then for your dad to come in and actually, like you said, pick up for you in that. Yeah, I felt very... Uh, I think it's... At, at the, back, looking back in hindsight, it was the only time I felt validated yeah. that I was heard. And did you feel did you feel like that marginalised you more, though, because then you were... Yeah, I, 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 I kind of, oh, I was the rat. Yeah. Yeah. I was the rat to the school teacher. I was the rat to it's the priest to the school then, teacher. Yeah. So was, although there was a bit of relief there, there was a compound, a, a worse compound of fear, fear whip of paranoia. Yeah. I remember paranoia sne sneaking. I didn't know the word, yeah. but I knew I was observing everything. I was watching everything like a hawk to see how people Such a young age. Your toes for that age is mad, isn't it? Such yeah, I was very age. aware for that a, a kid at that age. Yeah. Wow. I was aware of so much. Yeah, mm. and, and so then it was obviously Father Walsh's who comes and has the chat with your ma and says yeah. I can look after him and and and, and bring it in and obviously like you said you've there's a few kids in the gaff there's a lot going on your ma was probably that was probably the best thing to hear it was the him. best yeah. thing yeah, yeah one less child to be worrying to be about worried about like you know yeah. he'd be safe yeah. safe yeah safe would be a word yeah, yeah. yeah and come out like so from there on then. The same day you left with him, or did you? Yeah. That day, yeah. That, well, that day we went down to the park, the Phoenix Park. We had a ramble around the people's gardens, the duck pond down there. And that evening there was um, uh, an altar boy uh, meeting, like an induction. It was held in the sacristy in the sacristy in the the Assumption Church in Ballyferma. And I remember being very nervous going in. He says, you'll be fine. And he introduced me to all, everyone. The priests were there. And the altar servers had their own room, their own toilet, little closets made. And it was agreed that it was a certain amount of money. If memory served me right, it was seven pound, which would have been a few quid back then, mm. to get your, your, your surplus and your, your altar boy outfit. And then you were given the pamphlet of a Sunday, which was an entire mass. Yeah. So you had to learn that. Everything you had to learn, so you had to learn when to when to bell, when to kneel, when to do the bells, when to do the smoke, yeah. when to collect the, the money, and know all the prayers. You had to learn everything, and then you were you were put into groups. So there'd be uh, back then there was uh, morning masses before work. So back then there would have been like half five mass. There would have been seven o'clock mass. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 Jesus. yeah. I'm packed. Yeah. They'd be going to mass before to for work and then there would have been elevensies, eleven o'clocks. And then Sunday was a big day because you had your mornings, then you had your 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 eights, nines, tens, eleven, twelves, ones, then there was a breaks, then you had your fives and your sevens. Yeah. So mass Jeez. was a big thing on Sundays. Confession was a big thing on the Saturday. Um to go in and do your confession. So yeah, yeah, I was brought, and then you were inducted. There was a kind of a, you know, if you come, become very good and serve enough masses, he says, you know, put yourself down for all the masses. Mm. Little did I know why he wanted me there that early and doing so many masses. Mm. So, yeah, you would be chosen to serve weddings. Mm. Back then, it's a bit similar now. If you're getting married, the best man would have an envelope and you put a few quid boy for the altar servers. Mm few quid for the priest, a few quid for the church, then a few quid grushy for later on for people getting trampled on for yeah, a few yeah, shillings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But sure, it was what we used to do. So, yeah, you were invited to do them all. So it was quite appealing to do all that. Um, those masses, back then there wasn't a lot of money coming into our home because of various other things. So we used to have um, a milk route before school. Mm -hmm. So before school, I would, Deliver well, milk around yeah. Ballyferma. And then half in between that, then you would be taken out of class. You'd come into the school and he'd take you out to serve um, a wedding. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't be asked. You'd be just, there'd be, there'd be no excuses. He'd, he would just come in, I'm taking Darren, and he'd be gone. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I would have paper around then after school. So that would be three to maybe five, half five. Delivering the newspapers to the same area, so it's kept going to get the few quid in, yeah, yeah. and then you had your your masses in between it, late masses, morning masses. Mm. So it was kept busy that end of yeah. it, and I was constantly surrounded. 
Yeah. By altar servers and by priests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like when when would when would like uh, uh, then like so that was what six, seventy nine seven? yeah yeah would have been seven seven yeah and then like how long how long after that did he start trying to touch it or oh straight away know? yeah oh yeah. Yeah, what like, so, so you 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 so you settling were you staying in the church home no so the way it's set up most churches are set up the same so you have your church and either it's normally like the shape of a cross believe it or not mm. so your church is centered and to the left or the right whether at the front or the back you would have uh, parochial homes yeah so that's where he lived on the one on the right hand side facing bally firm road so he was there, there was one at the back, uh, Coal Park entrance, mm. and there was one Lafarnia Road entrance. So there was three sets of houses, and I think there was three bedrooms in each. So there would be been three priests in each. Remember, mass and, and church was a big thing back then. Yeah, yeah. So there was nearly more priests than there were um, ch- shops. Yeah, but but see, did you just live together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. The alt- so all the altar boys, did they live? With, no, we didn't live there. So uh, in, 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 in the church itself, there would have been a sacristy. And then there would have been a part where the altar service had their own little locker yeah. and your gear was in there. So you would attend there for mass, mm. to do your mass before, and then obviously you get stripped after. Yeah. And then the priest would be taking his garments off. Mm. Uh, you were there early to set the crudes up, the wine, the holy water. Yeah. Um, and then you would leave, either go to school or you'd end up in his car. Or sometimes there was a side entrance, uh, a gateway from the church to his premises. And then you'd be invited back there, and that's where the force encounter happened. Yeah, like I'm sorry to bring you back to this, but I just want to make it very clear. Um, it's it, it's very hard for me to ask, but do you remember the first time he put his hand on you? Yes. And what was it like? How how did that like being so young? What was he trying to do? Like like when he put his hand on you, like how did you know what he's trying to do, or did you feel? Or did you go numb? Yeah. Like did you did you know what I mean? Being so young, like like how did you know, I don't want to bring... It's so hard for me to even talk about it to try and bring no, you back to this. phrase or whatever way you need to phrase yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very hard topic, you know. But, like, being that young, what was... Was it in a car? No, the, the first incident was in the house. Um, we went into... When you went to his house, his room was into the left. He had a sitting room. And there was, like, the window, and then there was... He had a TV stand, and he had a record player. Um, so he used to play Elvis uh, songs. And he had a little drinks area. He drank Powers whiskey and there was Taylor Key, was the, the orange back then, and the lemonade, red, white, and orange. He had sweets there, chocolate bars, refreshers, crisps. So I didn't think that, no, I thought it was great. I thought it was quite, you know, I was proud to be allowed to be in yeah, there. Yeah, privileged. Like. And, and I didn't have to go back to school. It was great. Yeah. He said he would have me excused. And I just started with singing and dancing and he'd have you dancing around the place. Um, he'd have you uh, sitting on his lap and ask you to be dancing on the spot. And that's what I used to do, be bouncing up and down on his knee. Never thought anything of it. Um, back then, I, as I do now, I'm still 50 and I'm a sucker for a pair of shorts and a T-shirt. So back then, I used to wear the same. And I remember him touching me leg up and down, rubbing the inside of me. I, to be honest with you, in hindsight, I didn't give it any, didn't give a second thought whatsoever. It didn't feel weird. It didn't feel strange. I did get creepy, though, sometimes. I don't know why. Sometimes he'd breathe. I still get it now. I get shivers when I think about it. He'd breathe on the back of your neck, and he'd whisper in your ear, you know I love you, you know I love you, but he'd hold you tighter when he'd say that. Mm. That kind of, even now, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Still get the shivers from that. Yeah, sorry, sorry to bring it back there, man. Oh, that's like, okay. Yeah. And like, so when he started touching your legs, touching you like that and all, and what was the first time that he actually, like, do you remember when he first... Yeah, so it was about a week after that. It was a Sunday. I was doing a 10 o'clock mass. I actually know who was serving the mass with the altar servers. When trauma hits a body, when stuff is happening to you, it, your body goes into like a video kind of mode. So I recall everything vivid. Everything, sense, smells. Um, I remember going back and, uh, yeah, there was a, a packet of crisps handed to me and uh, a packet of refreshers, they're like um, a chalky sweet, different multicolored, and uh, orange I was given. 
And I remember putting so, him putting some of this, I didn't know what it was, but I know now it was whiskey, Powers whiskey. Um, and I felt like we were there for ages. And he sat me on his lap and he got me to stand up after about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. He made sure I drank the lemonade and then all the sweets. I, I didn't understand why. And uh, I remember him putting his rub in my chest and playing with me nipples and then putting his hand down. And he kept saying, you know, I love you, you know, I love you. And that was when I felt something, something, just something wasn't right. Mm. Um, I still feel the feeling now as I'm talking. Mm. It's like, um, yeah, it's, it's like my breathing got very shallow. My face became very numb. I became fixated in the room. All I could see was the telly, but it seemed to shrink. The television was shrinking. Mm. Uh, pins and needles as I have now in my hands. It's weird. Mm. It's a weird sensation. And yeah, he just kept playing uh, with, with me willy, as I call it. But I do remember him messing with me bum as well. Um, I remember being sore. Um, I didn't know what he was trying to do, but I know he did, I didn't like what he was doing. Um, and then it was just like, it's hard to say. It's not hard to say. It was like I was there, but I wasn't there. Well, there. It was like I could see what was going on. I could see myself what was happening. But I couldn't do anything about it. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And what, what age is that? That's seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Jesus, Darren. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And up until that age, I guess. Um, that wouldn't have been long into September. Mm. We weren't long back in school. Um, yeah, that was, um, that was a mad day. Yeah. yeah. Up until that moment, it's a safe space as well. It's probably why... Like, you know, that feeling, that, that that privilege of being there or, you know, noticing the earlier signs of it, but not really noticing it and it just kind of being, yeah. sure it's a priest, how was it? Like, and, and back then, the priest is as good as the guards or yeah. the president or whatever, mm. you know what I mean? It's a, you know, a high authority figure. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, and, and, and from that moment then, what happens, what happens after that? So when, once that obviously starts and ends what what comes after that then Did yeah you just drop was, you home or is like yeah yeah i was dropped home in the car yeah because you were seen to be well in hindsight looking back i i suppose it, i was his trophy mm. you know I, I he was my protector he he said that he would look after me and he dropped me home mm. so it became it, i suppose looking at it now it was a trust thing for me, ma. You know, he he was my son was dropped to the house, mm. and he went in for the cup of tea and all that. And he, it was mad. It was weird looking at it because he used to allow me smoke. I smoked at the age of seven, like, so oh yeah, you'd be given the smoke after stuff. Yeah, it's just oh, trust building. Yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. So my ma smoked ten number six, and uh, I remember going back, and him opening them, and him giving me a smoke in front of me ma, and it was like him saying to me ma this is okay for him to have a smoke you know that, that's that's how my ma was introduced to my smoking i was smoking before that yeah. it's just me ma didn't know about it she just yeah. realized some of our cigarettes were going missing all the time yeah you know yeah. so it's mad, like like i look at that now and i'm looking at the age that you're saying like my son is what six mm -hmm. and like like the innocence in him as well like he, he, if if i picked up a smoke now and start smoking it he'd be confused yeah, yeah, but yeah. Never seen smoke before. Yeah. You know, come from, you've never seen anyone around us smoking a set for his nanny and all. So he's like, he's so, still learning. He's so pure yeah. to it, like, and that's why that 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 story there. And like, I know I brought it up, but it hit me hard, man. You know, yeah. I felt it like, um, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah. But like, um, like you're saying, like, so he goes back. Sorry for putting that out there. Yeah, I just no, said absolutely. I was... That's okay. You know, no, um, this is what we're yeah. here for. Yeah. Um, so, well, he went back. So, he, he let me a smoke in front of the match. I think that was... But that to you right now, if you look back, would, that, would you say that's a power trip? I wouldn't say... I wouldn't have classed that as a power trip. Now, in, in the work I do, that's that's a grooming technique. Oh. For sure, yeah. He's stamping his authority with me mother. I'm over you. I'm, yeah. the, I'm a priest. Mm. And I'm telling you, your son is okay to smoke. And he's fine. 
and he's your son is safe. And yeah, me ma ironically used to say to me now and again, if I was going through, have you got a cigarette? Or you take a drag of a cigarette the first thing in the morning and you'd have to hide in case one of the kids mm. seen you. But yeah, that was uh, definitely manipulation to manipulate my mother as well because he brought her cigarettes and as I said, money was tight in the house. Yeah. So he was he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the right strings, yeah. 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 So that, that was the kind of way he, he progressed um in my home and in the school it just it just got it just got worse as all i can say yeah. um the day the, the day is being taken out of school again i didn't feel any i didn't feel there was anything going on anything strange didn't feel there was an issue or a problem i felt very much loved i know that might sound a bit weird to hear yeah. i did feel loved i felt very protected um, but I guess that he was trying. To, he was trying to make you feel that as well. I guess given what he was doing. Looking at it now, that's mm. he, well, he achieved it, didn't he? Yeah, mm. definitely, hundred mm. percent. Um, and money, you'd get money. You know, he'd, yeah. he'd buy his sweets, the latest thing out, you'd get. And like, was he constantly at you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I so would like say it, it only came out when we were doing the trial. Um, uh, when we were doing the trial in twenty ten, as to how frequently he would get to me. So although there were various counts that he had to stick by in court because of, um, I suppose, that he was fighting all the time and it was, we, they, the DPP just wanted to get this to court. They wanted it and the less hassle. So there was a lot of rapes that I had to, and abuses I had to agree to drop. Yeah, Jesus. Um, to, to, get, to get it this far. But it, it turned out in 2010 that I got to say the whole lot. But his barrister pushed me too much one day. And the judge just redirected the trial to we're going to start from fresh air. Mm. So I got to speak about how it happened, and a bit like today, there was I was given the time um, to speak about the, the 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 pathway to to where that got me to the to the trial. So yeah, he's um, I was being generous when I said this, and I'm still being generous to him. Minimum three times a week. He would have got to me, minimum. So if you can imagine seven days in a week, I would have served mass every day. Yeah. I would have done three or four weddings easily and funerals the same. And then coming in and out of school, taking me off and then anything you can imagine in between that. So just to say three times was being very generous to him. Putting it lightly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, as I said, it progressively got worse. Um. As I got older, it got worse. There was, there were, there were, the fingers went in. Um, the smells came in, poo, stuff like that. Um, wiping you. Um, these, out, as, as I, I know them now to be out-of-body experiences. Back then, they were just numbings. I just knew them were numb. Mm. Um, so the extent of the damage he was doing on a physical feeling level, I didn't feel a thing. Mm. No. And yeah. is that why, as sorry, as you as you went on, as they got worse, you're also saying that you you never really felt like there was nothing happening. There was nothing wrong. Really. No, yeah, that was just normal. Yeah, it was he, normal. But it was very strange. I, don't, I know. I know what it is. I know what it is today. Yeah, it's fight or flight, and I know I'm very much aware of the spirit or the soul leaving the body, and you can have an out of body experience while trauma is happening. I'm aware of all this now. Back then, I didn't, but I, I definitely seen that happening to myself. But I didn't see any urgency to do anything about it or say anything about it. Yeah. Because I didn't feel I was being violated. Yeah. It was only when he got he got very sadistic. I remember as I was getting older. Now there were implements used on me, so mm -hmm. I didn't tell the parents or the family or psychiatrist growing up about this because like, how do you say something like this? How, yeah. yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, like I was reading, sorry to put in there, because I was I was reading somewhere as well that. There was one time, um, no, actually, I didn't. I, I, there was a video that I came across. I think I sent it to yeah, you, that's yeah. That's right, yeah. And uh, it was the time that you'd done. I don't. I think you'd done a talk with RTE, did you? Yes. A while back. Yeah. And um, it was something that he brought you in, and he was um, explaining to you um, if if you rat or something like that, yeah, you're gonna go to hell. And you know how? Do you know how the feeling is to be born to life? And then um, I let you speak about it because mm. it was something to do with like him tidying you up. 
as well then yeah there were there were several incidences like that so there was there was crucifixes used on me crucifix is that the candle is it that's the one no, that you that's, spoke no that's just a crucifix oh. uh, that's a cross inserted okay and like why like because you were misbehaving with him or what no like, he just took it to a different level so that this was this was it progressing like you said this yeah, was yeah, sadistic, yeah yeah and then there was seven back then we had a green seven up bottle that had a very long neck mm. that was used on me as well as if you want to use a collar a dildo a sex toy and mm -hmm. um, that's the way it was used there was defecation from that so not only did the act happen but when i defecated i shit myself all over his, his rug um, I was in his pocket, so it was nothing about what I he had done to me. It was about what I'd done on his rug yeah. and cleaning her up. Shame So they were stages of problems. Because of the lead up, I, I suppose in hindsight he was probably fearful because I was getting older. Um, his sadu his sadistic approach to me was getting worse, and I was getting worse. Um, you know it's getting worse when you see another child on his lap and you're jealous. That's yeah. when it kind of stuck home for me. I used to go into bouts of rage in the school when, like, I'm not. I ha I had that much energy with anger. I used to run like Superman going around it. The, the world. Mm -hmm. I used to run around the school with anger just to release the somebody sitting on his lap. So this particular day we were in and I had approached, he'd approached me because I'd given out to him in the school for letting somebody sit on his lap. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, um, why am I sitting on it? Uh, why don't you do to them what you're doing to me? Mm -hmm. And this was me punishment. So he had, um, he said, you want to play a game? And I said, yeah, whatever. So we had a coffee table in the sitting room um, and I had um, casters, little brass casters, like egg cups. Mm. And he tied my hands with rope. Well, I know them to be the vestment, the rope off the vestments that he had. I'll never forget that. Mm. And... Uh, Take your time, man. He... Um, he tied me hands to me legs and he was playing Elvis. It was a lovely sunny day out. And uh, I remember seeing a candle lighting, like the ones we used to bring for hot, when you made your communion, you had a candle you had to light. It's the same at baptism, you're given a candle. Yeah. Um, and I seen it lighting, I remember saying to myself, well, what's that lighting for? Then I remember him touching me hips and then I felt something going into me generally a finger and then I felt something else going in uh, that was his 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 willy and then I start crying I felt like he was yeah I felt like he was at me for a long time and I could smell poo I remember looking, trying to look under the table to see if I had something that come out of me because there was always something coming out of me. And uh, I just, he just said to me, come here and I'll show you this. And he took a Bible out and he had it in front of me. And he was saying, you know, if you tell anyone, um, you'll go to hell. You know what hell is, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. He says, you know, the flames of hell born forever. And you're born for eternity. That means forever and ever and ever and ever. And I goes, yeah. And um, he says to me, do you know what it feels like to born? And I said, no. And with that, I just felt this. I felt like a little bit of heat for a moment. And then it was a fucking whole lot of heat. And I, I don't know what happened. I just felt like I just was shitting and shitting and shitting and shitting and burning. I remember yeah. feeling shit, born, shit, born, shit. And it was like, it was a born, like, it was a born. Yeah. And I, co I, I remember crying, I couldn't stop uh, shitting. And I kept crying and crying, I got louder. And I remember him leaving the, 
the table and he hurried the music up and he opened the window. <coughs> they had the old windows and he had to give her a nudge to open it. And I could hear somebody and there was a stairway at where the sitting room was, a stairway going up and I could hear somebody there and I kept crying and crying and crying. And I could hear them stopping on the stairs and I thought I was praying here, was please, please let it be the housekeeper, let it be the housekeeper. Mm. But then the steps continued going up. It was like, and I remember going, fuck. And then he cleaned, he cleaned the mess up. That took a long time to clean up. That took a very long time. Um, he cleaned me underwear, but I wasn't allowed to wear them. And I remember going home with them in my pocket saying, what am I meant to do with this? You know? It was, it was, it was horrendous. He gave me uh, money. He, back then, um, yeah. There was a, a, an English 50 pence piece doing its rounds. It was a, a 50 pence piece with a load of hands mm. on it. And I got 50p off him. And uh, he dropped me home. Um, I remember after that not being right. I just knew. I just, I didn't, how would I say? I was lost. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, d I wouldn't hang, I didn't want to hang around with my mates. I didn't want to hang around with my sisters, my brothers. I didn't, I just didn't want to be around anyone. I can only imagine being yeah. that young as well. Like, Absolutely, you know? yeah. It's like, traumatic <laughs> shit. Like. Yeah, like. That, that was, that was one, one severe incident. <laughs> and, and those incidents has continued. Uh, and from that one? From that one, oh, he didn't stop. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, no. No, 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 no. Now, the man didn't have a stop, but I can tell you one thing from that day on. I know when somebody says the word born to me, yeah. Understood. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If I even smell candles, I'm like, fuck. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Mm. Candle wax. It, like I've, been, I've been born a lot of times. I've been born off a toaster with gas, electric. I've been born with cigarettes. I've been born with... I've been born with pokers. I've been born with coal. Gas, petrol, I can tell you, it's, there's something lingering about the bone of wax that will not leave me, ever. Yeah. Jesus. And then, so, so from that, which is obviously the moment, probably the curtain drops for you, and again, because at that age, you're not really aware of what any of this stuff is, like you're saying, and hindsight is, is probably where you're really kind of collecting what a lot of these things were to you at the time. Yeah. At the age, or no one's going to be thinking, you know, and even at that time in, in, in the world, that wasn't really a thing to be oh known, your emotions and yeah. paranoia and stuff like that, you know? No, it was years ago, even growing up, if you got beaten, so you were told, shut up, I'll give you something to cry yeah. for. Yeah, you, you had to be a beaten. man up. You have to be man They're up. They're getting a hiding up. here now and mm. get over it. Yeah, taking on the chain. <laughs> it's just so hard to, it's so hard to go back to that, you know? Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah me. man it's a lot nah it's fair like at, at such a young age you know take a, <laughs> take a break yeah take a break boy. Sorry. Yeah, man. Walking off. so although I had that had been happened to me with the priest something else was happening in the background so I used to visit me nanny's house. She lived in Bluebell. And, and uh, one of our sisters lived there, or her husband. And he brought me for a walk, got me some sweets. We made it to the end. Guys, if you're fucking with us and you like exactly what we were doing, everything we talked about, make sure to do what? Uh... Follow, like, share, subscribe, YouTube or Spotify, no matter what you're listening or watching us on, be sure to hit all them buttons and run up them numbers, my guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you better. <laughs> <laughs>